All right then. Okay. So, we're the board. This is the last, the last thing, the final stretch. Everybody had a good time? Yeah. yeah. Awesome. So, um, we did something a little bit different this year. Uh, normally, every year, you know, after the board get elected, um, we have a, a big annual meeting where SUSE hosts us and we visit SUSE and um, we basically spend several days locked in meeting rooms um, discussing about, you know, what does a project need to have done, what, you know, what do we need to sort out, etc. Um, and we normally do this in like Easter time. Um, but, you know, as you will remember, we had a few problems with our election tooling this year. Um, so we didn't actually get the election finished till later on. So we had that meeting the last three days before the Open SUSE conference, which is why we all look so tired, because we've been here for six days. Um, but it means that we've got this chance to kind of give you an update of what we've been thinking about and kind of the agenda that we want to set for the next few years, the next few years, next year in the project. Um, and, you know, the short and simple summary, because I don't want to take any too much time, you know, it's the last day of the last session, the last, com last bit of the conference. We've been busy. We've been really busy. Um, in fact, when we started this meeting, uh, you know, we've been thinking along the lines of, you know, the project's been through a whole, part, whole lot of change in the last few years. We've done Leap. We've re completely revamped Tumbleweed. There's been huge technical change in the, in the project. And the plan was we're going to take it easy this year. The plan was useless. We've, that's, yeah, it's not going according to plan, but it's way more exciting as a result. But that's where we started. So we were thinking about kind of tidying up what things that need tidying up in the project. There is a fair bit of sort of organizational craft lurking around in the project. Things like wiki articles, policies, procedures, old corporate statements from the Novell days, feature requests, et cetera. Um, We've started tidying that up over the last few days. Um, so if you get a whole pile of emails from Fate, that's us. We've been closing fate entries, which have already been done in the distribution. Uh, we've been closing feature requests that are just never going to get done, or we think are never going to get done. If we're wrong, reopen them, find someone to do them. Um, we are going through the wiki and tidying up various parts there. This isn't a job just for us and the board. If there's things that you see that you think, why is that there? Why has no one fixed that? dive in, help, tidy up, you know, we're, we're trying to clean all of that cruft out that we've kind of left lingering around for the last few years. We've made a start. Um, as a fate example, we actually managed to break open fate while doing all this tidy up by making too many changes at once. Um, so, you know, that's getting fixed now. Um, but yeah, so moving along there. But that's, that's going to be an ongoing thing for the year, and, and we really want to help anybody who's, who's moving there. So if you have any questions, if you think anything needs the board to review, just mail board at opensuse.org. We'll you know, help you tidy it up. But while thinking about that, and, and actually this, this uh, point came from, from Martin as well, um, you know, 42.2 is now live, 42.3 is in development, and 42.1 went end of life a week or two or so ago. And we've noticed already, and we've, we've you know, seen from the mailing lists, and we've, we've seen from our users, that not enough users really are, uh, you know, followed the release cycle that we had planned for Leap. You know, there's a lot of people still lurking around on 42.1. They didn't move to 42.2 in the six months that they had. Um, and really, it, it's kind of obvious why. We, we kept the old terminology from the old OpenSUSE way of doing things, where we used to have every single version being a major version, um, which meant there was, you know, going to be some risk of change when you moved. That doesn't really make sense for Leap. Every single minor release is a minor release. It's, it's based on a SLE service pack. Um, so, you know, we, uh, the, the question was asked and we kind of decided that you know, with Leap 15 coming next year, don't be surprised when, the, on the messaging side of things, we start using terms like service pack or maintenance pack to refer to those minor releases. And you know, we're going to be making sure that you know, release announcements and, and marketing announcements make it much, much clearer what that release cycle is. You know, the end of life period you know, starts from the sec you know, the end of life period for a previous service pack starts the second a new service pack is released, the six months from that point. So you know, we want to help get that message out. Please help us. Please remind people that a minor release is just a service pack, really. Another thing we were looking at, um, and I mean, anybody who's been in the project for more than a year knows we've been looking at this, um, is an issue with the, the membership program. Um, so, you know, 
Obviously, to elect the board, you need to be an OpenSUSE member. And, and currently, you know, to be an OpenSUSE member, you have to have, you know, a bit like Ubuntu or, or GNOME, had to have been a, a contributor for a while and, you know, have sustained and substantial membership. Which is a real pain in the ass to, to actually figure out if that's true or not. Um, you know, we have a long, complicated process of applying, waiting, the tool breaks and accidentally loses certain requests. And ultimately, most of the time, you know, it, it, we're just guessing if the person really has contributed or not. Um, and also, over time, where even though that, you know, it does eventually work and they do eventually become members, it, it means that it's also very hard to unbecome a member. We have loads and loads of members on our list who don't do anything in the community anymore. We're 12 years old, they've left, they've moved on, fine. Um, it means actually that, well, these guys, not me, I'm different with me, but these guys are basically uncontrollable dictators at this point. Because they're all elected by the community, by the, you know, by the membership, but the plan in the, in the, in the plan in the original policies of things is 25% of the members can cause a recall election of the board. Well, right now, we can't contact 25% of the membership on the list. So, you know, they have complete power. Um, Sousa can fire me, but they can't get rid of them. Um, we, the board, all of us don't like that situation. We want to be more accountable to the membership of the community. We want to be, you know, to the community at large. So, how do we fix that? We're going to be changing the situation so a single contribution to OpenSUSE is enough to be eligible for a member. You still have to apply for it and want to be a member. We're not just going to randomly give out membership to anybody who's done anything once. But if you have one measurable contribution, be that um, you know, an, an actual thing, you know, bit of code or mailing list post or whatever, it's enough to become a member. The exact details in the tooling of, of, you know, automatic approval or confirmation is a work in progress. You know, the current tool we have, we want to decommission. Um, you know, we do have a few scripts that are helping us with that process. But if we, you know, if you want, if you're interested in helping us with this, uh, Mihal is currently doing most of the work he could do with help, you know, people helping him. Um, we will be looking, well, we will be already using a tool to automatically renew membership. So if you are contributing at least once a year, this will never affect you. You're a member, done, fine, no problem. If, however, for whatever reason, you drop off the radar from the tool's perspective, like changing your email address, for example, will probably cause that. Um, once a year, this tool will ping you and say, hey, do you still want to be a member? The principle that we want to keep throughout all of this is an OpenSUSE member remains a member as long as they want to be one. So that ping isn't a you know, threat to get rid of you. It's just making sure, are you still there? Are you still interested? If you are, cool, fine, good, done, still a member, at least for another year, and then you know, the bot might be stupid and ask you again. We'll see. Um, but we need help with all of that tooling. We need help with that, and especially as we did a test run of the tool while we were here, and we accidentally deleted 90 people that we didn't mean to. So, incredibly sorry about that. Please just email us, we'll put your membership back. Um, yeah, you know, beta testing in is always fun. Sorry. Um, and yeah, that covers the membership side of things. Um, another thing that was, was on the agenda for the meeting uh, was, Handling the the rough edges of the project. Um, everybody should know from me ranting last year on this stage. Um, this is an area that, that's incredibly close to my heart. Of you know, what do we do about the unsupported parts of OpenSUSE? You know, what do we do about people using Devel projects or you know the unofficial spins of, of like Krypton and Argon or new initiatives like like Cubic was here. You know, the these things are something which people want to use. They're going to use it. You know. They're exciting things, but they're not that level of quality that we, the OpenSUSE community, are normally doing things. They're not being tested by OpenQA. They're not built to the standard policies we use in Tumbleweed or Leap or anything like that. And how do we handle, well, when we started this, we were talking about how do we handle the rough edges? Do we, you know, kill or drop these or whatever? But as we were discussing this week, we, we realized that that isn't actually the question that needs to be answered. The question is sort of how do you handle people's expectations of, this, of, these, tech, of you know, these bits of the project? 
So when they use them, they dive in knowing this might not, this is still open SUSE, but it might not be finished yet, or might not be totally that same level as the main deliverables that the open SUSE project gives. So like you can see there, open SUSE incubators is a, is a program we're starting, basically ripping off the idea entirely from, from Apache. Apache solved this problem, you know, their own way. Um, and, and from our, the way we see it is sort of you know, an official stamp of, of both intent and quality. You know, any open SUSE incubator project is an open SUSE project, and it's something we're actively working on. But from a quality perspective, it's an open SUSE project that isn't quite yet of that quality, but it's aspiring to be there. It's going to be there sooner or later. Um, the sort of things that we're thinking of, like I said, things like Krypton, Argon, where you know the, the communities there are you know, working on testing, working on improving these things, they're trying to get there. It's a perfect example of the sort of thing which we think would make a good open SUSE incubator project. We, we want the kind of badge to be relatively easy to get. You know, a casual application to the board is, you know, the way we're thinking of managing it to at least to start with. And, you know, we're going to ask a few simple questions like, is it more than one contributor? Do you, know, do you have one or two people doing it? You know, have you thought about testing this? Have you thought about that? But this isn't going to be any hard definitions because these projects might not be something that's easy to compare to what we're already doing. This might not be another distribution. This could be, you know, something like a spacewalk build for OpenSUSE, which wouldn't fit in that same concept. So how, you know, how do we handle that? We're not going to make long, complicated policies. It's not a way of doing things. We'll have this simple process. You apply, we think about it, talk it out, you're an incubator, and then we'll make it a little bit harder to, just like it already is, to have that as an, a fully official OpenSUSE project where, you know, there'll be, there'll be some probably still subjective criteria, but making sure that, you know, we're using the open SUSE name on something that is, you know, polished, tested, done the proper way, just like we do everything else. And again, with all this stuff, we need help. Um, you know, we need to know which projects would make sense to become these first, you know, incubators. We need help tidying up these processing criteria. And of course, this could potentially have a big change on things like the tooling. Um, we were thinking about with Devel projects in particular. Um, there's a lot of Devel projects where they exist purely as a development messing around the ground to put stuff into tumbleweed. You don't want users touching them ever. And if they do, they're going to break. Um, but there's other Devel projects like GNOME Next and the KDE Unstable ones where they're built with users in mind for potentially testing and playing around with the latest version of, of the various stacks. And they're tested and they're looked after and they're moderated properly. They're Devel projects still for factory, but they could also be incubation projects too. If that happens, we're going to want to reflect that in tools like software.opensuse.org so they're treated as a different tier of not official, but not, you know, do not touch, be scared, unsupported nonsense. So we'll need help reflecting that in the tooling and the websites, etc. cetera. Um, so, you know, we haven't put, put anything on OpenSUSE project yet, but, you know, we will, or if someone wants to start the discussion straight after this, start on the mailing list, we'll talk about it. Job done. Nearly, nearly there. Next year, OpenSUSE conference. We've been thinking about that. Um, you know, I hope we've already said everybody had a good time. We love coming here. It, it's been as much fun this year as it was last. Um, but we're thinking for next year doing something slightly different. Um, you know, mainly thinking the idea of, of co-locating co with a different event. And obviously, you know, we're close to Prague. There's lots of contributors we have in Prague. There's another SUSE office in Prague, which makes it easy for the budgeting side of things. Um, so we're thinking of, of taking OpenSUSE 2018 to Prague, the university they have there, co-locating with the, the CryptoFest, which conveniently happens about the same time this time next year. Um, nothing's absolutely certain yet. Um, you know, if it doesn't work out, plan B is to, to come back to, to here and do another OpenSUSE conference in Nuremberg. And even if this happens, I, the board's thinking of having a model of one year having the conference in Prague and trying to co-locate with something there, and every other year coming back here, having OpenSUSE here, because it works, we love it, it's been great. And then last but no means least, mission statements. We had a long, long discussion about the OpenSUSE mission statement. Um, first, because we were thinking of tidying stuff up, like, 
why do we even have one? You know, other projects don't, Fedora do, but like Debian don't and don't have this. But we decided that we think it matters. It, it sets the tone of the project, or more accurately reflects the tone of the project, and is the first thing that everybody quotes when they say, what is OpenSUSE? Um, you can just look at it, especially in the last few years where we've been getting a lot more media attention. The OpenSUSE mission statement gets cited in every single mention of us in conference web pages, in news articles, all, all the time. It's the first thing a newcomer is likely to read. And our mission statement currently reads this. OpenSUSE is a worldwide effort that promotes the use of Linux everywhere. And it was. That's what we started doing 12 years ago. Then we started looking at, okay, what do we actually do in OpenSUSE? And I mean, this is just a tiny example. These are all the OpenSUSE sub-projects. You've got testing tools, you've got a huge collection of different things, which are all OpenSUSE in their own way, and they're not necessarily Linux. So should the mission statement have been something like this? You know, a worldwide project that you know, promotes the use of Linux and build tools and testing tools and system tools and software delivery tools and collaboration tools everywhere. <sighs> no. Um, and while we were talking this out, we kind of realized that, that both, especially this one, but even the original one, misses the whole point of what's actually special with OpenSUSE. Because it's not just about what are we doing, but how we're actually doing it. And some of the things that really set OpenSUSE apart from everything else is the fact, as a community, we really care about working openly, having not just open source, but open discussions, different ideas. You know, our entire develop project model is built on the idea of we're going to have different teams working in different ways, so let's find a way of cramming that all into factory. It, it's just the way we think, having open processes in everything. But even though we do everything openly, we worry about doing things right in the first place. Half of those tools exist because we care about engineering things properly. We care about doing it the right way. We care about building it reproducibly in the build service. We care about testing that stuff properly. And our current mission statement just kind of ignores all of that and put, doesn't even mention it. And we also really embrace the traditional open source way of scratching your own itch. Nobody sets the agenda for OpenSUSE more than the community does when they're doing it. You know, we are open, you know, you set it, well, we set it. it there's no difference. It, it's one consistent mess of everybody doing whatever they want to do. And how do you really sort of reflect that when we're trying to set mission statements of what the community does? So, I mean, this isn't final. Um, basically, I'm going to have to write all of this up in this explanation way better because I haven't had the time while I've been at the conference. Um, but, you know, we're going to be talking on the mailing list about this new draft of redefining the mission statement as OpenSUSE, openly engineered tools to, to change your world. You know, basically really focus on all those main aspects of we do everything in the open, how we engineer stuff really, really matters. The use case of why, what are we doing it for, is whatever our community wants to do it for. It's your, it, it's your things you want to change. And of course, ultimately, everything we're building is a tool in some form, be it the build service, which is more, or, you know, OpenQA, which are obviously one, but the distributions themselves. Ultimately, they're useless if they're not doing something, they're tools. And that is the last thing I have on these slides. So um, with that, does anybody have any questions? about this or anything else in the project? Or does everybody just want to go and have beer? Um, just, for, just, yeah. just for the mission statement, I would say, um, when we talk about community, it's a community of human and not a community of tools. Then perhaps we have to find a way to put somewhere here inside this sentence a uh, human. Well the, well, the human part is the your. You know, we're, we're not making this for robotic AI yet. Uh, yeah, okay. But you, it's a fair point. We did discuss that. We actually went round and round in circles and tried to figure out how to put a human message in there. But we, we thought the your world part did that. But it's a fair point. When we put this on the project mailing list, I fully expect a really long mailing list thread. Don't be surprised about it. This is just a draft. It says draft.
But this is what we were thinking about. Cool. Okay, then. Yeah. Oh, no, Christian, you tools. go on. Oh, sorry. Tools and processes, perhaps, because I think it's equally important to make an open tool in an open way. I think you, you have that openly, but process is a, like a bigger word that would wrap many of those concepts there. I, I can barely that. hear a word you're saying because of the oh, sorry. speaker, sorry. <laughs> anyway, just wanted to say maybe processes as well as tools, because I think these are equally important. Your processes instead of tools? Yeah. Um, yeah. Totally. I mean, the openly part was kind of meant to imply that, but trying to fit all this stuff in a sentence is, is killer. But yeah, we're, we're working on that one. Hey, um, yeah, I like the new statement. I'm just surprised because I thought we just changed it two years ago to the maker's choice. Nobody mentioned now they... That was a marketing tagline. That okay. wasn't our mission statement. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, that's... This... this all of this stuff that we've explained here, or I've explained here, you know, in our mission statement, we have like paragraphs explaining what we're trying to mean behind that, and that's, that's what the whole mission statement will do in full. And that's just the short, simple part. Hi, Mark. I just want to say I like your mission statement. Usually, usually when people get together to, to have a mission statement, you take the number of people on the committee, multiply it by like eight, and that's how many words are in your mission <laughs> statement. So I think, you, I think you guys have done a really good job trying to keep that it minimal. That is totally Thomas's. He deserves all the praise for that because our original version was like that long. It was terrible. And then he got the clipboard out. He's like, start voting on these that's words my point. and we're going to kill him. <laughs> and we got down to this for, thank, all thanks to Thomas. Uh, I just want to bring up a, a topic that we're working on with Linux Magazine. Uh, we're going to try to uh, get a magazine out called Getting Started with Linux. And so we were going to have them work on that for uh, 42.3, and we need some articles. So if any of you are interested in writing something specific about 42.3 for a magazine, contact me. Cool. Great. Thank you. Okay then, thanks a lot for a great conference and uh, yeah, see you all next year, hopefully in Prague. Oh, sorry. Ah, ah. What do you want? Uh, just a quick check. Who is aware of the TSP? <laughs> just want to make sure. Okay. Well, okay, maybe I should rephrase the question. Who's not aware of what the TSP is? Ah, perfect. You can explain that then. Right. So, uh, OpenSUSE have what's known as the Travel Support Program, hence TSP, because um, we're in technology, so we like acronyms. Um, and the aim of the TSP is to enable community members to represent the project at other events, at venues, um, etc. Uh, so if you would like to attend a conference or some other event, um, but it's not necessarily um, pocket change, so it's not just 10 euros to get on the train or whatever, um, you can submit a request to uh, TSP. Uh, the current uh, and foreseeable uh, deal is that the TSP will pay up to 80% of your travel and accommodation. Um, we do check to make sure that you can get potentially cheaper flights, um, but it's fairly easy to apply for. Uh, so just make sure that when you do submit a request, um, currently it's through Connect, uh, but that's not a major issue. Uh, we'll just be moved to a different um, piece. Uh, but if you go via the wiki, if you just search for open as a TSP or open as a travel support, um, you'll easily find it. Hopefully we can have a, an easier URL to remember. Um, but I just want to make sure that if you are interested in representing open as a, in whatever shape or form, um, and you'd like help to do that, please do submit a request. Um, if we've got any questions, we'll get straight back to you. TSP will just confirm with the board to make sure that everyone's happy uh, with that. Chances are, actually, I don't know of any reason 
in the past that the board have uh, complained? I know one. Putting my, putting my other hat on for a second, as a, as a, as a SUSE chairman, um, the protocol for SUSE employees who happen to be contributing, and there's a few of you in the room, um, is, is subtly different. Um, the TSP is, you know, is there to help, um, but SUSE wants to make sure that SUSE is paying for SUSE first before making the community pay for anything. Um, so the TSP is only available for uh, SUSE employees who also contribute to Open SUSE. Once your manager has already said no, um, and as long as you're actively contributing to the event in question, like doing a talk about Open SUSE there, so you know it's still there for you. But really, try and get your manager to pay for it first, and SUSE should be paying there. So that's the only time I can think of we've ever said no. So that's all. Does anybody have anything else they want to talk about? Any questions, you guys? Any, yeah, any complaints? No. If that was true, the project mailing list would be so much quieter. <laughs> All right then, thank you very much.